A scary situation for a local pizza delivery driver after a customer allegedly robbed him during a delivery. I don't rob pizza delivery drivers. We're hardworking people. We just want to make a living and um, get home safe. Plus, he tried treatment after treatment, but the cancer kept coming back. I, I had no idea that there were you know, tumors or one of those that were on the cancer cells. Now he's trying a virus that normally no one wants to help kill the cancer. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Good evening. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Pizza delivery drivers work hard and for many drivers it's a way to earn extra money, but it can also be dangerous at times. And that was the case over the weekend when a local pizza delivery guy says he was attacked by customers in Spokane. Crem G's Amanda Rowley talked with that delivery driver for his exclusive account of what happened. At the request of the pizza business, we're keeping their employee and the business anonymous. Now, managers I spoke with today say it's becoming more and more frequent that their employees are attacked or hit in some way while out delivering pizzas. So when one of their employees was attacked over the weekend, it came at no surprise. Spokane County court documents say the employee needed to confirm this new customer's identification for the credit card used to buy the pizza. But when he arrived at their home, the customer refused. So as the employee went back to his car, the suspect, along with three other people, started to yell and swarm around him. Docs say they took the pizza from the back seat of the car and hit the employee with the delivery bag it came in. Then they ran inside the house. The delivery guy told police the girl who hit him was between 16 to 18 years old. We met with the delivery guy to hear his account of what happened exclusively. She had wedged her way in the door jam of my car so I couldn't shut my car door. And uh, the group she was with, they reached in my back seat, forcibly opened my door, took the order out of the bag, and, you know, ran off. Anything like this happened to you no, before? No, never. Nothing like this. Usually, uh, um, when we deliver, customers are, you know, pretty cool, pretty happy to see us, you know. Did you ever think something like this would happen? No, not in a million years, never. The employee stayed at the house as he reported the incident to police. Docs say the officer responding to the home tried numerous times to have someone answer the door, but was not successful. The suspect in this incident is in fact a juvenile and at this point is only being investigated for robbery and vehicle prowling in the second degree. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. And other news, a heads up, Idaho State Police say you should avoid the area of Highway 41 at Prairie Avenue and Hayden Avenue for the next few hours. This is just north of Post Falls. There is a grass fire, as you can see, in that area. Not sure how big that fire is right now or if it's threatening any homes. We'll give you that information when we find out. We're working on it now. And we still have a little ways to go before we're breathing good air, but what we're seeing right now is a lot better than recent days. Yeah, relief, isn't it? Let's get yeah. straight to Tom Sherry taking a closer look at that air quality. Tom? Yeah, sweet relief. Lots of folks out and about today as the air quality has now dropped unhealthy for sensitive groups. We're in the 130s right now, low 130s. Remember, we are in the upper 300s uh, for Sunday and Monday morning when we are in the hazardous levels. So this is certainly a big, big improvement. Uh, air quality alert, though, will remain in effect until Thursday at noontime. That's when a cold front is expected to move through the area, and that should bring us some strong, gusty winds that we think will improve our air quality even more, so fingers are crossed. I think we're going to kind of seesaw with our air quality over the next 24 hours. You can see at the end of this visible satellite loop, that's all smoke, or most of that right there is smoke. See how it thickens up just at the very end of the loop, and we tend to get some of our uh, higher readings as we get more into the evening and overnight hours. So cool and hazy overnight with a low of 56. 87, the expected high on Wednesday. I mentioned that cool front towards the end of the work week. It drops us down into the 70s for the weekend. So we're hoping for less smoke, but partly cloudy skies and then mostly cloudy on Sunday. By the way, Sunday night into Monday morning, about a 30% chance we might get some rain showers. That would go a long ways in cleaning out our air. I'll have more on your 10-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. We'll talk to you then, Tom. Thank you very much. Meantime, doctors are turning one patient's nightmare into another <coughs> patient's lifesaver. Krebji's Rose Belt shows us the unusual, effective way oncologists are treating melanoma. Hey, you have cancer and you're a pretty healthy guy. I had to find a chair pretty quick, yeah. I had to, I had to sit down. It kind of knocked me for a loop. 
About four years ago, 51-year-old Ken Child's doctor found a cancerous tumor in his left eye. Doctors successfully removed the tumor and his eye and declared him cancer-free. Ken and his wife Cindy felt optimistic and began to adjust. You're living a normal life. You know, I was getting used to one eye and everything, and you know, it just became kind of accepted that one eye's working, so we're just keeping on trucking here. And Ken went back to work, to the outdoors, and is enjoying life with his family. And then, about a year later, Ken's cardiologist discovered a new mass in Ken's left lung during a routine physical. And you felt fine? Yeah, I felt fine. I was working every day, and you know, I mean, I was. What I was feeling was the effect of getting older with a stressful job. That's what I thought I was feeling. Despite his feelings, the cancer returned. It only took three weeks for the cancer to spread to his body and brain. So now what are you thinking as his wife? I'm thinking we need to get to an oncologist as soon as possible. I, I had no idea that there were you know, tumors or lymph nodes that were on the move. It would have been the last thing because I'd transitioned so, so easily be, with, the, with the eye loss. And being told you know, every six months that I'm still clean from cancer, clear from cancer. Ken began traditional treatments in Utah. Did the infusions, I did everything that they needed me to do at that point. In spite of his best efforts, the treatment was not working. He says his doctors prescribed him a chemo pill and gave him six months to a year to live. Now that was devastating. It was to the point where I, I, I couldn't even find words for that. I didn't know what to think, I didn't know what to feel, I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to do for probably two weeks. I was just numb. You know, the more they'd look at it, the more they'd find. The news wasn't getting better. Now we're thinking, how are we going to tell the kids? Or you if know, we should. Or if we should tell the kids. You know, that was, that was a, a really hard decision. But we ended up telling the kids because we felt like they needed to know. Like we kind of lost all hope for a minute. But they did not accept Ken's odds much longer. They switched gears and started to look for other options to attack the cancer. They heard exciting things were going on in Arizona. I had gotten in touch with the Cancer Center of America and they got back to me the next day. I didn't expect them to take our insurance because it was out of network. We got a call the next morning and they said they did and they'd have us on a flight over there within, a, within the week. We can ultrasound this one and see. And were introduced to oncologist Dr. Alan Tan and technology that was different from what Ken was receiving. The efficacy in uveal melanoma. Dr. Tan's having success using the herpes virus to attack aggressive cancer cells like Ken's stage 4 melanoma. It's not the same virus that's associated with a cold sore or as a sexually transmitted infection. The virus has been genetically modified and altered so it can safely be injected into a tumor and help the body attack the cancer cells. You know, it may sound complicated, but in a nutshell, we're trying to get the immune system to recognize the cancer. Whereas at the present time, the, the cancer may look invisible to the immune system because it's not releasing uh, certain proteins or what we call tumor-associated antigens. Meaning, the herpes virus known as the TVEC treatment kills cancer in two ways. It stops the cancer from infecting healthy cells and kickstarts the body's immune response against the harmful cells. The immune system then develops an enhanced ability to detect and attack cancer throughout the body. Similar to what happens when you get exposed to chicken pox and you don't get chicken pox again, the cells will remember that protein and destroy it the next time it shows up in the body. So far, the TVEC therapy has shrunk the tumor on the outside of Ken's head and he's praying for more. If it's working on the visible ones, then you know, hope to, to God that it's working on the inside ones. Ken unfortunately has a really difficult melanoma. It's not the skin type, it's the ocular or uveal melanoma. And these traditionally don't respond to the, the, these modern day immunotherapy drugs. I have hopes that he may, you know, have more benefit than others. Hope can be difficult to hold on to sometimes but the odds are improving when it comes to some cancers. 10 years ago, I would be able to offer very little. You know, I can give you this, give you that, and then after that, it's probably just, you know, comfort care. Now I can tell people my intent is cure. We might not always get there, but we're always gonna have options down the line.
Even though life looks more promising now, Ken knows he still has a long road ahead of him and is making the most of his time. He and his wife Cindy left Utah and downsized to a motorhome so they can travel and spend time with their kids and grandchildren who live between Spokane and Post Falls. If I believe you have to believe in living in order to live, and when you're being told that you're not going to and there's nothing else that, we can, that just kicks, kicks the wind right out of your sails. Ken hopes that sharing his story will help give other cancer patients the hope and answers they need. I might be gone in two, three years. I might be gone in a year. I might be gone in 10 years. I don't know, but I know I'm planning my, digging my feet in deep right now. Wow. Rose joining us now. Interesting stuff. Uh, right you. now, the treatment's only being used to treat melanoma, but is there a hope that it could potentially be used for other cancers as well? Correct. So it is being trialed for other hard tumor cancers like breast cancer, rectal cancer, some mm -hmm. lymphoma. So mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. And how about this treatment compared to, say, chemotherapy in terms of side effects? Uh, from what I hear, from, from what they say, the side effects are a lot more mild, more like flu-like symptoms, mm. not as severe. Wow. Yeah, really impressive. And one, and just one thing about Ken, which his attitude through all of this was mm -hmm. amazing. Um, he, he looks at it as, you know, this time last year he had no options right. and he's still here. Yeah. So if he can keep it, if he can hang in there, maybe something else will be available down the line you know, just to keep moving sure. that forward. Yeah, so. We definitely wish him the best. Indeed. Thank you, yeah. All right, thank you, Rose. Thank you.